Fresh off a 6-0 home defeat to London rivals Arsenal, West Ham are a club in a bit of turmoil currently. There's a pretty big portion of the fan base that wants David Moyes out, with more joining that idea every single week it seems, and despite recent European success, they have found it pretty difficult to get away from that mid-table position in the club and break into the top six on a regular basis. So today, we're going to try and fix that. We've got a huge stadium, some great players, and we're going to try and take West Ham into a Champions League, maybe even Premier League contending club. West Ham are of course a club with a rich history and plenty of trophies in their past, including the recent Conference League win, but outside of that, their last domestic success was the FA Cup in the 1980s. They've never done better than a third place finish in the Prem. And whilst we will need to improve the squad to get into the top six, we do have some pretty handy players already on the books. Take James Ward-Prowse for example, who's very highly rated in FM. Edson Alvarez is a recent signing from Ajax, hoping to fill that Declan Rice void left in the middle of the pitch. Of course, we have Brazilian star Lucas Paqueta running the midfield. And to help us out up top, we've got Jared Bowen and Mohamed Kudus also, but we are probably lacking an out-and-out -out striker in the team. Financially, the club is very well off though, with £133 million in the balance and not too much to note in the debts and loans. With £24 million to spend in season one and a hundred grand of wage budget, we've actually got quite a lot of money to work with should we want to bring in some new players to the team. So let's sell some players, bring some players in and get this rebuild started. Before we do kick this rebuild off and check out the transfers though, if you guys could show your support to me here on the channel, I'd be massively thankful. Just take a few seconds if you could to scroll down, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It's free to do. You can change your mind at any time and doing that will really help me in the YouTube algorithm. And on top of that, make sure you comment down below what rebuild you want to see next. Every rebuild that we do is based on your guys' suggestions, so make sure you drop them down below. Finally, just to let you know, if you want to support me as a creator, there's a Patreon linked in the description. Over over there I post the save files from these rebuilds but now that we've got all the plugging out the way let's go see our transfers. And there was a lot more movement than I anticipated in the window and that's because we sold one of our key players our centre-back Kurt Zuma formerly of Chelsea. He wasn't one that I was planning to sell at all but Saudi Arabian side Al Ittihad came in and offered us 63 million pounds rising to 70 for the 28 year old and as good as he might be we cannot reject that. I had to take the offer so Kurt Zuma is out the door and we had a lot lot of money then to reinvest in a new centre back as well as a new striker. And for the striker position we've gone for a youngster, 19 year old Wilfred Nonto. He's an Italian international already and got off to a decent start to life at Leeds but then when they got relegated it seems like something happened and he hasn't been playing as much this season in the championship but he is clearly a player with a lot of promise and in Football Manager that is reflected. Speed, pace, it's going to get him behind, he's got good finishing ability, dribbling ability. Whilst he is already a great player I I think if we give him some game time up front, he could develop into an elite talent in our team. And for Zuma's centre-back replacement, we have gone for Danilo Doki here, the six foot three, 25 year old Dutch centre-back coming in from Union Berlin. He did a tour of the Netherlands before moving to Germany and helping Union Berlin get European football. And now hopefully for 11 million pounds, he is going to be our new starting centre-back. But of course we had some extra cash to spend as well. So I've decided to bring in another midfield option, someone that can help fill in Paqueta's boots when he's not there, i.e. a forward-thinking midfielder, and I've gone for Gabriel Sara, again dipping into the championship to Norwich, who had signed him recently from the Brazilian divisions for 10 million. We then paid 22 million pounds for him, and I feel like he could be a very good squad option in that midfield. And for those wondering as well, I do have a transfer pack installed, so moves like Calvin Phillips to West Ham on loan are taking place in my in-game world, so it's all reflected, it's all up-to-date and accurate. And with those new signings in the club, this is apparently what our best 11 looks like in the 4-3-3 shape that I'm looking to play with this West Ham side. Firstly, Fabianski is in goal, but for how long? I don't know. He is 38 and pretty old. We've got Kufal, who is the Czech right back in the team. We also have Mavropanos, a recent signing, Greek international defender. He's next to Aguard at the back, the Moroccan. And then at left back, we have Chelsea's former player, Italian international Emerson. Moving through the midfield, we've got Calvin Phillips, Ward-Prowse and Paqueta, who you've met, as well as Kufal. 
Kudus, Bowen and Antonio is supposedly our best striker but I don't think the Jamaican will feature as much as he might expect for us. I'm probably going to expect Nonto to play a little bit more and someone like Mavropanos to drop out for Doki over the course of the season and maybe even Edson Alvarez in that ball winning midfielder spot. How the team will line up I'm not too sure but we're ready to go for season one. The board want a top half finish and we are predicted to finish in ninth place so all looks good for that to happen and hopefully as the years go by we can sustainably keep building this club up, maintaining the finances and taking West Ham to new heights that you haven't been to for a long long while. And the post-David Moyes era at West Ham hasn't exactly got off to a flyer with us in charge, but it hasn't been the worst season either. We finished in 10th place in the league on 59 points, 16 wins, 11 draws and 11 losses. We were 7 points away from Manchester United in 7th place. So not the worst performance in the world. Some good teams above us, to be honest. A lot of teams that you might expect to beat us too. And the teams we'd expect to beat, we are above. So it's about where you might expect us to be at this current moment, particularly when we were also playing Europe. European football. We got knocked out of the Europa League by AC Milan in the quarterfinals who did eventually go on to win the competition and they only just beat us as well so it's not the worst performance. FA Cup quarterfinal exit, Carabao Cup fourth round exit, not the best but it's not anything that we need to worry about just yet. Performance wise it was a great season from Suchek Bowen and Wilfred Nonto who contributed with 17 goals in his first season at the club. Nine of those in the league at the age of 20. Hopefully he can keep building on that. Emerson was also great as was Mohamed Kudus with 14 goals, Ben Rama got 9, Ward Prowse only contributing with 1 goal all season, not the best but Sara did well after coming in playing a bit part across the course of the season with some good performances. So it hasn't been the worst start to life by any stretch and we have got £60 million to work with going in to our next transfer window. We've got great facilities as well but I would like to improve them as time goes on but with that being said we're ready to get into season 2 where we can really kick off our transfers and start making making this West Ham team our own. Let's start with a sale though where we did manage to shift quite a few players on that I wasn't too happy to keep around long term and we got some good fees too. Firstly, Maxwell Cornet, the Ivorian 27 year old has gone to Brentford. The best part about it is we got £25 million for him considering West Ham paid £17 million not too long ago from Burnley and he didn't exactly set the world alight for us. I'll definitely take that. He had a good season last time out which attracted that interest and now we've moved him on and we've got more money to reinvest in the team. I also moved on the Englishman Flynn Downs who's a 25 year old he's gone to Burnley formerly of Ipswich joined West Ham for 9 million got loaned to Southampton for a year where we made 2 million from that and then sold him for 10.5 so we make a profit never really did too much for us was okay in the championship but I didn't really think he'd make the step up so out he goes and we get more cash for our first 11. Vladimir Kufal didn't have long left on his deal and when I went to give him a new one he wanted some unrealistic contract I said no he got upset and I thought you know what it's going to be best to move him on than to lose him for absolutely nothing so he's gone to Crystal Palace for 4.6 million a good servant but wasn't very good last year started 14 games and disappointed in pretty much all of them other sales to note that I'll move through quite quickly Danny Ings I didn't want him and I've sold him to Mines in Germany for 4.2 million a young player Freddie Potts has moved to Sheffield for about 4 million quid 3.4 million rising to 3.7 I don't think he's very good so I'll definitely take that Brazilian centre-back Luis Jao was hiding in our under 23s under 21 so I promoted him and sold him on because I just don't think he's very good 2.4 million pounds to the German divisions that's more cash for us and no idea who this guy is either to be perfectly honest Andy Irving I sold him on for 1.6 million to Sturm Graz out in Austria he originally came in from the Austrian divisions anyway by the looks of it it's a bit of a weird one we make 100k in profit and forget he ever existed coming in though I think we've made some fantastic signings firstly one for the future English 18 year old Archie Gray again of Leeds like Nonto was joining us in this transfer window that was for a fee of 18 million rising to 21 so it's quite a bit of money but I do think he is a very talented player he's valued at about 30 million pounds now and I think as time goes on he'll keep getting better and better he just needs game time and he should be able to grow into one of
of the world's best in his position. Angelino has joined us for some depth at left back to compete with Emerson. The Spanish 27 year old has signed for £5 million. He's really travelled the world on his career so far. Galatasaray, Hoffenheim, Leipzig, Man City, PSV, NAC, Mallorca, Girona. I mean, I could list even more clubs that are on this list. Now he's here with West Ham. Hopefully he can settle down. A very good player that doesn't seem to stick around anywhere for too long, but a very capable left back option to compete with Emerson. Another signing from the Championship, we have stolen Watford's star boy Yasser Asparilla, a Colombian international, age 20, who had a good year in the Championship last time out and used to be one of the best wonder kids in Football Manager. If you don't know though, in these rebuilds, I don't use my own knowledge. I only sign players based on the scouts recommendations. That way, I'm not signing the same players every time. And Yasser Asparilla was recommended. He's a fantastic player with a lot of potential who can operate all the way along that front line. So I think we've got a very good signing there. And the last player to join us was Vladimir Kufal's replacement, who is Yukinara Sugawara, who is a Japanese international, 24-year-old, coming in from AZ Alkmaar, out in the Eredivisie, where he's been fantastic. If you haven't seen him in real life, do check him out, because I do think he's got a big move lined up somewhere in the future. It's going to happen for him in his career. He's a very, very talented player. The few times I have seen him, he has been the standout for Alkmaar. So definitely one to take a look at if you haven't. But I think he's going to be a great player at right back. And those were our transfers done. Overall, we spent about the same as we made. I think we made 52 million in sales and spent 56, something like that. So we pretty much broke even on that front. And I definitely think we've improved the team. Ariola is now our best goalkeeper. Ben Johnson is at right back with Mavropanos, Agward and Emerson. That's probably a position, that defensive area, where I want to improve going forward. But midfield is amazing. Alvarez, Ward, Prowse and Paqueta with Kudus, Bowen and Nonto and some great talent on the bench as well. I think midfield wise, we're pretty much set for the next few years. If we can improve our defense and maybe add a few more attackers to the lineup, that could bode well for the future. If we have a look at the season preview, again, the board just want a top half finish and we're predicted to finish in 10th this year. So one place below where we were last year, but hopefully we can outperform that. It's now our second year at the club and we need to start delivering before West Ham fans get on our backs and want us out like they might do with David Moyes. And this year has been a notable improvement. No European football really helped us, as well as getting exited out of the Cups at a very early stage. It meant that we could finish in sixth place in the league on 71 points. Like I say, Cups knocked out by Luton in the FA in the third round, and the Carabao Cup knocked out in the fourth round by Tottenham. So we never really had a chance in either of those. But 71 points is great. We finish above Liverpool. We finish above Aston Villa. Liverpool now managed by Roberto De Zerbi. And I think that's a very good second year for us to have because it shows clear progress. We're going back into Europe, which gets some more money into the club. And we were only six points away from fifth place Arsenal. So definitely not the worst season that you've ever seen. Chelsea go on to win the title. And we've had some great players to thank for our performances this year. Nonto again with 17 goals. Asparilla contributed with 10. Bowen with 11. We got Paqueta getting nine and Gabriel Sara getting six. Him and Paqueta, the two Brazilians, being our two best performers this year. 10 goals from Kudus as well. So great to see that he he is still performing at a high level. Archie Gray, unfortunately, didn't get too many opportunities, but he is still young and plenty of time to get better. It does now mean, though, that we've got another 60 million quid to spend, another 300,000 pounds or so in the wage budget, and the financial situation is still looking very good. Like I say, I am working on the facilities as we go over time at the club. So things are on the up here at West Ham, and with European football on the horizon, we need to improve the squad to go again in season three. And it's been another transfer window where we have swapped over quite a lot of the old heads from the West Ham team. Firstly, this was actually last season in January. Thomas Suchet wanted to leave, so I let him go for £29 million, rising to 36 from Feyenoord, which actually, for a 30-year-old, is again, in my opinion, pretty good business. Also leaving was Sai Ben Rama with a year left on his contract. The Algerian has moved to the Bundesliga for 5 million to play for Union Berlin. Tilo Kera wasn't one that I was actively planning to sell, but I wouldn't have minded losing. And when Brighton came in for 18 million, it seemed like it made sense to me. We could sell him on and reinvest in our defense, which I've said for a while needs an improvement. And we also moved on some more defenders with Danilo Doki, who we signed in season one, going to Feyenoord to continue his tour. We make a little bit more money than what we 
sign him for if the add-ons come in. So it's not been the worst transfer, but he just hasn't played too much recently. So it made sense to get him out. And then this wasn't a transfer I was planning for. Ben Johnson, the West Ham Academy product has been fantastic at right back. But then Al Ali came in, offered us 29 million, rising to 37. He got given a 400 grand a week contract, made sense for us, made sense for him. And I think we're pretty happy to see an Academy product go on, get all that money and set himself up for life, hopefully, with that cash. And despite losing those players, we've bought in plenty of great talents. Oscar Glauk has joined us, international experience at the age of 21, a fantastic player who can play as a number 10 or in that midfield spot. Joining us from Salzburg for about 15 million quid. It's not too much pressure on him to do amazingly well, but I think he could turn in to a real star. Now, this is a transfer that I can fully visualize happening in real life in my head. Calvert-Lewin is a West Ham player. He was available as a free agent because Everton got relegated and he obviously didn't want to extend his deal with a championship club. I think they have now been promoted. Yes, they have. So Sean Dyche has brought him back to the Prem, um, but he has left Everton for free. We were the benefiters of that and we have got a very good striking option now. Hopefully he can help out Nonto, get some minutes on the pitch and score some goals for us. But we spent a lot of money in trying to keep goals out with Abakar Silla coming in for 40 million quid, but he is an elite level centre-back at the age of 22, a left-footed ball player who can defend well, can work as a free or as a back four. He's got great leadership as well, so he's going to be a future captain and he's been fantastic for Strasbourg in Ligue 1 and Ligue 2 out in France. So clearly a big player and hopefully the 40 million price tag won't affect him. And if it does, we shouldn't have to worry because we've also signed Igor Daviv, the Russian international centre-back who was phenomenal last year with a 7.78 average match rating for CSKA Moscow out in Russia. You can see why our scouts picked up on him playing like that. We've paid only 10 million pounds for him. A fantastic six foot four physical presence kind of replaces what Zuma offered for us and hopefully he'll do a good job for us at the back. And finally, our new backup goalkeeper that I think will eventually grow into our starter, Ilan Melier. We have raided Leeds yet again for another player. 20 million pounds rising to 23. I think because Leeds just haven't been promoted yet, all of their big players are willing to leave. It might even be our fault that they haven't been promoted. All of the players that we've managed to steal off them, but he is coming in. It's going to benefit us. He can back up Ariola for a year or two and then eventually take over between the sticks. So our best 11 is now ready to go with Melier in goal, Suguara, Daviv, Silla and Emerson as a pretty new look back line. You will see we have adjusted the formation a little bit too to be more attacking now that we've got better players in our team and our midfield is perfect. Paqueta and Ward-Prowse with Bowen, Kudus, Asperilla and then Calvert-Lewin is up top with some great players on the bench as well. This really does bode well for the coming season. The board still want us to get a top half finish which isn't too bad. Of course we do have Europa League football this year and we predicted ninth place so we're exactly back where we started despite all the transfers we've made but hopefully we can manage to do well in European competition as well as compete in the league and the cups. It will be very hard to do but fingers crossed it all works out. Now, as I mentioned before, we were in the Europa League this year and we managed to get to the knockout stages where we beat Salzburg, we beat Monaco and we beat Roma to eventually make it into a final against AC Milan who knocked us out in season one in the quarters. So it was time to get revenge and after a nil-nil match, we went to a penalty shootout where it was very tight. Melier, he made a big save. We then stepped up and missed our penalty, but then thankfully Milan came back onto the spot. Torreira took the shot, formerly of Arsenal and Melier made a another huge stop. We then put the ball in the back of the net through Kudus, which put us in the lead. That meant Milan had to score. Loftus-Cheek put it in the top corner and then Igor Daviv stepped up from the penalty spot to give us a Europa League win with a brilliant penalty. So that has meant that we have won a European competition here as West Ham manager and it's better than the one Moyes won. He won the Conference League, we won the Europa League and maybe with two years left to go, there's time to win that Champions League, but I'm not getting ahead of myself. That being said, we will play UCL football next season. We finished in sixth spot with 66 points, so less points than before, but still enough to get that sixth place finish. Would normally be a Europa League spot, but of course winning the Europa Europa means we are going to be in the Champions League. The FA Cup, we got to the semi-final, knocked out by Fulham, who eventually lost to Arsenal in the final. We lost on penalties there, so a little bit unlucky. And Chelsea knocked us out of the Carabao Cup. So clearly it's all those London teams that are doing our head in here, but definitely a fantastic season. And we have some top, top performers to 
to thank for getting us that trophy. If we have a look, Calvert-Lewin, Nonto and Ward-Prowse. 18 goals for Prowse after only getting one goal in season one is a much better improvement. Nonto got 25 and Calvert-Lewin with 29 and he is now injured. So typical Calvert-Lewin style, but well done to those two. Ilan Melier played 55 games as a starter, was fantastic in goal, is now wanted by our Halley. And you know what? If they come in, we're not going to be able to match whatever they can offer him. So there's a good chance we lose our goalkeeper there, which seems to happen in every rebuild. I get a good keeper and then along comes the Saudi Arabian sides and tries to steal them from us. And after two penalty saves in the Europa League final, you could see why they might want him. Silla was great too, as was Asparilla. Jared Bowen with 16 goals. Paqueta with 14. Kudus with 7. Sara with 9, who's definitely been a very value for money signing at 20 million. We've got loads of minutes out of him. Loads of great performances. So things are definitely on the up. We're still trying to improve facilities as we go. The club's reputation has improved also. Financially, there is £76 million in the balance. Nothing really in the debts and loans either. And we've got £74 million to spend in the coming transfer window to take this team into a potential Champions League contender side. Just a quick reminder, if you are still enjoying this video, please go ahead, smash that like button, the subscribe button as well. If you haven't clicked it, I'd really appreciate it if you would. Over 50% of the people watching these videos aren't subscribed, so just check if you haven't. And if you haven't, we do weekly rebuilds. Hopefully, it'll be good enough for you to hit that button. But let's have a look at who we signed and who we sold in Season 4. And I bigged him up last year as being a great player for us, but Gabriel Sara has now moved on. Again, you can't control it. Al Ali came in, offered him 450 grand a week, gave us 30 million pounds for our troubles and you know what we're gonna take that that's money we can reinvest he'd used a few years of his contract up so it made sense to let him go Aguard has also moved on to Al Fate who are paying him nowhere near the wage that we saw our previous player get he's 30 years of age now and he has gone to Saudi Arabia 15 million pounds is the fee again more money for us to spend the Saudi money kept coming into us here at West Ham and it is starting to look a little bit suspicious but Angelino who we signed in season one has moved to Al Quadzia out in Saudi again 15 odd million pounds we signed Angelino for five played a couple of seasons as a starter bench player every now and then and you know what we'll take the money and Ilan Melier was our other sale of the window and can you guess where he went drum roll Saudi Arabia Al Ali near enough 700 grand a week he's not going to turn that down and we're not going to turn down 43 million rising to 58 for a keeper that we spent 20 million pounds on last summer assuming he was only going to be a backup so you know what Good business all around and plenty of money now for us to spend on our team. Our new goalkeeper is going to be the Swedish international, 24 years of age, Philip Jorgensen, who joins us from Villarreal. £45 million is the transfer fee, getting close to 50 with add-ons. But you know what? It's still less than what we got from Melier in the transfer window. And I'd argue he's a better keeper and I think he might be younger as well. Angelino is replaced at left back by Milos Kerkesh here, who is a Hungarian international, 22-year-old fullback, playing for Bournemouth in real life currently in the FM world, moved to Watford, I believe after Bournemouth got relegated, had two pretty poor seasons to be honest in the Prem, but our scouts seem to recommend him highly, valued at 31 million, a release clause fee I think it was, and he's got great physical attributes, looks like on paper he should be fantastic, but you never really know how it's going to go in Football Manager. Nordi Mukiele comes in as a centre-back slash right-back option to give us some depth at the age of 28, the Frenchman is a more experienced player than what I have been signing, he joins from Atletico de Madrid out in Spain where he has been pretty good for the last few seasons. A steady Eddie, Mr. Consistent, 15 million pounds is what we send the Spanish side to get this versatile defensive option. And that was all we did this window and I do think this team is in a very good place now. The defense is looking very strong. Alvarez is apparently a good defender option for us. Wall Prowse, Paqueta, Asparilla, Kudus, Bowen, Calvert-Lewin, plenty of great bench talent as well. For those interested, Archie Gray never really got the game time as we were holidaying so he hasn't been able to develop the way that I want him to. Getting more minutes as the years goes on mind you but still maybe not going to reach the level that he could have done if we had given him more opportunities so he's a little bit unfortunate but overall this team is looking great still a top half finish is all that the board won and the season preview has us finishing in ninth place you will notice we won the European South American Club Challenge the Europa League winners against the Copa Sudamerica winners who were Emelec who are a team from Ecuador apparently we beat them 4-0 before the season even started so we're very happy so that's a cool little trophy to add to the cabinet but now we're ready to go for season four fingers crossed we can do well in the champions league and compete in the prem as well Okay, so as mentioned, we were in the Champions League. We were in the league phase at the start, of course, and we finished very high up, winning most of our games, 
We went into the knockouts, got drawn against Lille, who we beat, and then we had to face Real Madrid in the quarterfinals. And in the 22nd minute of the home leg, this defending from Real Madrid led to the ball falling to Ward Prowse on the edge of a box, and a spill from Courtois led to Bowen tapping it in to make it 1 0 to our West Ham side. And then in the 90th minute, we got the Olympic Stadium bouncing. For some reason, Courtois came up for a corner, and Archie Gray took the ball from the halfway line and banged it in. That put us 2 0 up. I have no idea why Courtois did it but that meant we were heading into the second leg at the Bernabeu with a 2 -0 advantage. And the second leg did not go as well. Bellingham scored early on for Real Madrid to make it 1-0 to them on the night. And then they got a second in the 37th minute. They had 4xG. We had something like 0.2. It just wasn't going great at all. It's Chouameni tapping it in. So that was 2-2. And it looked like all hope was up for us of progressing in the competition until the 93rd minute when Igor Daviv took the ball from the fence, found Ward Prowse to Archie Gray, and despite doing nothing all game, we found our way through, and Edson Alvarez cannoned one into the top right, and that meant we were heading to a Champions League semi-final. And after beating AC Milan 5-4, they're pretty much our rivals in the semi-final, we went into a final against PSG, but Goncalo Ramos scored early on in the 50th minute to make it 1-0 to PSG, and from then, it was going to be very hard to recover. Nuno Mendes took this ball down on the left-hand side, found Ugarte in the middle. That's the Zaire Emery. A brilliant play from PSG, to be honest. And Dembele made it 2 0. And we did unfortunately lose the Champions League final 2 0. But you know what? Who would have expected us to be there? I take it as a pretty good season. We were also runners up in the Super Cup. We didn't do too great in the Carabao and the FA, but the league we finished in sixth. 65 points, sixth place seems to be the place for our West Ham team at the minute. I think if you offered West Ham fans a European level spot every season, as well as a Champions League tour, Europa League tour every now and then, they wouldn't be too disappointed in that. So we've had a very good time here. Champions League final exit, very close to winning it. Just to show you, we had a very good year. But the reason we didn't do too great in the Prem was because for some reason in December, we decided to go from winning most games to losing pretty much all of them. Then we bounced back and won pretty much everything along the way. We were very good as the season drew on. I think the more wins we got, the more momentum we built. And again, we had some great performances across the board. Ward Prowse with 15 goals, Bowen with 14, Cavett Lewin with 27. Kerkesh, despite being poor for his last two clubs, was very good for us. Nonto got 15 goals, Silla with 6, Kudus with 11, Glauk with 13, Paqueta with 14 goals from absolutely everywhere. Archie Gray played a lot more this year too, which is great to see, starting to get more game time as the years go on. I think we could end this rebuild here and be pretty happy having won the Europa League and gone all the way to a Champions League final but we have still got one season to go and financially we have got a huge £100 million to spend to improve this team for one final time. Alongside Ariola leaving at the end of his contract we also lost Mavropanos in this transfer window going to Demac out in Saudi Arabia, believe it or not, for 12.75 million. And then more Saudi money came in. Igor Daviv has been fantastic for us, but has now moved on for 43 million, rising to 48. He wanted to go. He's been a pretty good player, but we make four times our money. He's getting 500k a week. So again, he is not going to turn that down. And we were pretty shrewd in our transfer business, making small improvements to the squad to improve our depth, really, more than our first 11. Antonio Blanco, though, does come in as one of our most important players on a free contract from Alaves, the Spanish international is 27 in his prime with great ability both going forward and defensively. Joe Scally is an American offering us some depth at right back for completely free also. Our new backup goalkeeper is Jean Virginia, formerly of Everton, signing from Boa Vista for 1.8 million. He was very good for them, caught the eyes of our scouts and now here he is as our number two. Tomena is going to be our backup centre back. We've signed him on a free as well, having been let go by Krasnodar out in Russia where he has been excellent. An eight average match rating. I didn't see that before. That is insane. Speaking of free transfers, we made one final one with Serge Gnabry joining, having his contract finished at Bayern Munich, having played very well for them. I don't know why they didn't extend it, but we've decided to capitalise on that. We have brought him back to London. He was formerly at Arsenal. He's been to West Brom in England before as well. Now though, he is a West Ham player and hopefully it will go better at West Ham than it did at West Brom. And to replace 
Mr. Vive, I have gone for Brighton's current player, but in this world, a Feyenoord centre-back who is John Paul Van Heck. He signed for them for 20 million and then moved to us for 31 million, rising to 34. A Dutch player with great ability, both passing and defensive-wise. So I think he's going to be a nice little addition to our back line. And with that done, those were all of our transfers made. This is our final best 11 with West Ham as we head in to our final season. We've got Jorgensen in goal, wanted by Bayern Munich, Sugawara, Alvarez, Silla, Kerkesh at the back with Prouse, Paqueta, Asprilla, Kudus and Jared Bowen. Just to show you, Asprilla is now a very good player, considered one of our best in the team and lots of great players on the bench as well. The board are still only after a top half finish, so really their expectations aren't changing and nor are the medias with his expected to finish in ninth place yet again. 200 million quid in the balance, a little bit of transfer debt, but nothing to ever worry about. And the club are currently working on some improved facilities as well. So hopefully once they come through, that will look a lot better also. So with that being said, we head in to our final season of our West Ham rebuilds, complete what I think has already been a much more successful era than what David Moyes had. And we will have to live on the success of past silverware because nothing was won this year. Not out of the Carabao and FA Cup in the third round, but we did make the Champions League round of 16, this time losing to Liverpool, who are of course a very good side. They beat us 6-2 on aggregate, but eventually we got the last laugh because we beat them in the Premier League by three points, finishing in fifth place. Man City were all the way in eighth, so this is a brilliant finish for us, really. Chelsea won the league. We qualify for the Champions League yet again, so I think we can be very happy with that. We have got a Champions League qualification finish. We've done okay on the European front as well. Lots of goals from lots of different players, so it's not like the team is relying on one player solely. I mean, Warprouse with 10, Kudus 10, Bowen 14, Asparilla with 20 this year, now wanted by Chelsea. It has been a fantastic rebuild for us. We've won trophies, we've improved the facilities, enhanced the club's reputation, all whilst doing it on a pretty manageable budget and helping the club financially at the same time. So this rebuild is definitely a success. Let me know what what rebuild you want to see next in the comments down below and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.